train in the Midwest. A train coming in the Midwest. Two events. A train. But then revival's coming. Like a train. But an incident with a train, yes. Pray. Pray. Wow. I guess we all heard that, huh? Is this a legit thing? Did Robin prophesy this train wreck in East Palestine, Ohio? What do you guys think? Is that legit? Now, again, Robin taking the time to make a video as though this was prophecy fulfilled. I took the time to type out verbatim what he said in this alleged prophecy. You can read it with me. Come on, a train in the Midwest, a train coming in the Midwest, two events, a train. But then revival's coming like a train, but an incident with a train, yes, pray, pray. This is what he's saying is prophecy fulfilled when it comes to the East Palestine, Ohio train wreck. By the way, just for the record, here is officially the states that fall into the category of being in the Midwest. It's 12 total states. Now here I've made a list of what wasn't prophesied. A date, his alleged prophecy made almost three years ago. Hold on to that thought. We're going to come to that in just a minute. Number two, a more specific location. As you just saw, the Midwest consists of 12 states. Number three, a description of more than just an incident. Number four, he made no mention of toxic chemicals and carcinogens. Number five, he didn't say it was an accident. He just said it was an incident. Number six, there was no mention of fire. This particular fire was measured as half a mile long. Number seven, no mention of evacuation. Number eight, no mention of derailment of 50 train cars. Number nine, what about the dead fish, the pets, and the livestock? And now we're going to talk about something else. Here's an article that was put up. Well, you can see the date, February 18th, although it does say uh, Jess Thompson put it out on the 15th. Either way, just within a couple of days. Could, to uh, could toxic chemicals reach a 100-mile radius to East Palestine? And you can read through some of this. It's very interesting. The toxic mixture of chemicals and carcinogens released from the wreckage of the Norfolk Southern Railway train derailment in Ohio could spread many miles out from the crash site. And it lists all the deadly chemicals. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce those. But this was massive. Even here it says that some of these chemicals were used in World War I as, uh, as a weapon. While the overall ecological impact of the chemical spill is not yet known, the effects of these chemicals could continually spread for several miles through the air around the town, depending on the concentration. They don't know how bad this is going to be for years to come. But I'm going to, and this, this is an excellent article talking about the seriousness of what this accident uh, caused. But if you come to this right here, this is very interesting. This is how bad it was. Ohio train derailment could become a full-blown ecological crisis. Here's a guy that says, we basically nuked a town, a hazmat specialist on Ohio toxic spill. This is how bad it was. And yet Tombstone, right, he wants you to just believe that this was an incident. How can anybody who claims to have a functioning brain think that this destruction which occurred in East Palestine, Ohio, was merely an incident? It is just disgusting, this man, 
and what he is doing here. I also want to bring up another point for your consideration. Here's another article put out by Newsweek on Saturday. Look at the title here. How common are train derailments? More than six already this month. You can scroll down and read through this. The one I want to come to is right here. In 2021, there were 1,087 derailments that resulted in 83 injuries and three fatalities. Over 1,000 derailments in 2021. And it cites some more statistics going back to 2011. Uh, there were 2,234 derailments in 2001. If you come down here, between 1990 and 2021, there was a total of 54,000 570 derailments for an average of 1,705 a year. Now, remembering that Robin Bullock made this alleged prophecy in May of 2020, you can look at all the derailments that happened in 21 and just 22. You're looking at about 3,410 derailments on average, right? But let's even be conservative. Let's take it down. Let's say there was 2,500 total. I don't know how many there were in 2022. Why didn't he choose any of those as you could easily classify any derailment as an incident, at least in his mind? Why didn't he pick any of those for his prophecy fulfilled? Do you ever think? Because you got to remember, he's the one coming out and saying, well, this is the one. This is prophecy fulfilled. But why didn't he choose any of those others? Isn't this just ridiculous? He's the one that's making the fake prophecy, and then he's the one that's coming forth and telling you when it's fulfilled with great drama. And the reason he picked this one in East Palestine is because this is one of the worst ones in recent memory. It adds more drama, doesn't it? Yep, that's the one, folks. That's the one. And the people just believe it. His fans slobbering and oozing over how amazing Tombstone is. Isn't he wonderful? He's a true prophet of God. What an absolute joke. I'm going to summarize and rant a little bit as I close this video. Here he is with all showmanship. Look, his eyes are scrunched up. He's getting a download from God, right? People believe this is it. He's got the guitar railing. You can see the date, May of 20. Now, you can't verify this because there is no video that goes back that far. So you're just going to have to take his word for it. But either way, the prophecy, the alleged prophecy itself, is so utterly ridiculous and so overly vague that the date really wouldn't matter because there's nothing here within the content of his so-called prophecy to even verify this is just another example of this narcissistic egomaniac publishing a prophecy fulfilled video where he absolutely must put himself at the center of attention. It's just sickening. While his guitar rails, he stands there in his leather jacket, putting on a good show, lights, camera, action, like he's actually getting this all from God. He's not. What he's doing is spewing a vague blurb about a train. To say that this alleged prophecy lacks detail would be the understatement of the century. Is this of God? No, it's not. This man, his alleged prophecy, was about something that happens thousands of times a year. Now, here's another point for you to consider. While families suffer in East Palestine, and they will continue to suffer for a long time, Robin's only position here as an alleged Christian man, his only desire was to get up and make a video where his primary concern was to convince his brainwashed fans, his brainwashed followers, that he is a prophet. Look at me, everyone. Look what I did. It's, again, breathtaking. Consider this. Robin Bullock is a multimillionaire. He's a man of means. 
He's worth anywhere from 20 to $40 million. How hard would this be for this guy to spend some of that money which he got by, well, you know how he got this money. But how hard would it be for him to roll a semi-truck up into East Palestine with much needed supplies? Like, I don't know, water, food, clothing, I don't know. That town is suffering right now. How hard would it be for him to do this? It wouldn't be hard at all. He wouldn't even notice it in his bank account. Why doesn't he do that? Why is his only option, his only choice to make this video so he can, again, get all the attention while doing nothing? Now, here's another thing. Is he obligated to do that? No, I'm not saying that. I can't do it myself. I don't get any money from what I do. But he does tons of money. Is he obligated? No, I'm not saying that. I'm merely pointing out the contrast in his choices of what he chooses to do in this situation. After all, he touts him self to be this great one of God. God speaks to him. He's the ultimate Christian leader, so in tune with God, yet he, when it comes to real action, with all the money that he has, he does nothing but glorify himself, get it out on video, get it out to the masses. Consider that. Again, I'm not saying he's obligated to do that, just merely pointing out to you because this man is a deceiver and it's and, and he's shameless it's just you know, people are, drew you're really angry yes i am angry about this because this is all they do another thing to consider the wealth transfer is coming right so just imagine he's going to get even more money when this wealth transfer allegedly happens so it's more of the reason to get a semi-truck full of supplies up there Think of how many people would be inspired if he were to do something like that. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. What does he do? Glorifies himself. Now, the other part of his, uh, Robin's alleged prophecy, was of revival. Again, very vague. In fact, no details whatsoever. But consider this. A staple in all of these alleged prophets' prophecies is revival. Year after year after year, thousands of prophecies of revival. So here we've got a revival uh, apparently breaking out down in Asbury. And he's going to get out there and say, yep, look at me, I prophesied it. No details whatsoever. So no, he doesn't get this either. You know, always remember why I do this. First John 4.1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We are obligated to do this. We're commanded to do this according to Holy Scripture. So it's not a great thing for a, a true follower of Jesus Christ to test these alleged prophets. You're expected to do it. And the reason why? Right here. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You don't just blindly follow them and believe them. You test them according to the Holy Word of God. And that's what I'm doing. So for all of you haters, you can save your touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. No, that doesn't work because, well, Robin Bullock is not a prophet. He's a false prophet. 